What is going on ladies and gentlemen, this is Anders and welcome to the 3 of Silver Silver guys. In this video, I'm going to guide you all through some of the best strategy to make silver in 3 of Savior. Now this video will be a follow up video for the future silver removal update as well. So I will be covering a lot of fuel farming and IMC decided to completely remove silver from fuel and hunting ground. Now with that being said, let's go ahead and jump right into it. The first one will be episode 7 questline all the way to episode 12 questline. Now this one is more focusing on the new and return players. You guys are the ones still trying to figure out the money making method for early game. And I gotta be honest on this topic. You guys are not going to make a lot of silver from fuel farming until level 400 to equip the T10 plus 11 Legend Savidos gears. Now you can get the full Legend Savidos equipment for free by completing the episode 11 questline. So it is very important that you do so because not only you're skipping ahead from the Veil Copper and Earth Tower gears, but it also provides you a huge amount of damage and defense boost. By doing the quest line, you are expected to get around 10 up to 15 million silver in total based on the quest reward as well as killing monsters and bosses. Now if this is your first time leveling your characters, I recommend checking out my unfunded leveling guys videos. The link to the video will be available in the video description below so feel free to check it out. For the second method, it will be a weekly raid boss content. This is a really good content with a huge payout whether you're a support or a DPS. Some of the items that you might be familiar with such as the magic stone to craft endgame equipment, bros of seal as well as adds future goddess equipment and demon equipment. The mystic time can be used to upgrade your art equipment as well as unlocking and lowering your character art skills. The mercenary badges to purchase extra shadow mode reset scroll and other good stuff. The shining demon lord cubes and the Borotra medal of honors. You definitely want to get into it because it provides your character so much reward compared to other content. Now if your character is extremely strong enough, you can also shoot for the top 10 ranking to give yourself extra looks like cosmetic, title, and trophy. The weekly raid boss cosmetic is actually the selling point for being top 5. And you can pretty much make a lot of silvers from 50 mil up to 200 mil depending on the type of cosmetic. Speaking of the mercenary badges, you might want to consider putting extra time to run very specific content such as the Burners Dungeon, Appear Very Hard Modes, Gem Fuse, and TBL. You can exchange these mercenary badges for a really good item like the Link Jewels, Jelly Mode Reset Scroll, DCP Reset Scroll, Assistant Album, and Caterola Box. The biggest payout from the mercenary shops is actually the CMs and DCP Reset as well as Caterola Box. You can get Brothers of Seal and Passive Recipe from the Caterola Box as a very low chance, and you can only purchase 10 times a day. Dimensional Collapse Point is probably the least favorite content for most players because the majority of parties will always prefer having a class like Priest for one shot turning that effect. However, you don't necessarily have to worry about that because you can purchase turn and death scroll for the market for a pretty cheap price based on the current supplies and demand. The payout for this DP content is pretty based on the drops. You can expect a lot of mercenary badges throughout the run, but sometimes you will get lucky to get Burst Sales, Earth Stone Fragments for the crafted Earth Stone, and maybe even Cheap Box. The next one will be Wiggly Lynching Ray. This is probably the most painful one because you have to spend extra time to find a party to run Bonas, more importantly on Normal and Hard Mode, as well as White Wish Force in the future update. However, the payouts for this content are actually pretty good. You can see a scale clip feather for roughly between 500k up to 1 million silvers. Morning Ponya powders actually sell pretty well as well for around 1.5 million up to 1.9 million. And then the rest is based on cosmetic that you're getting from the Earth Tower as well as well coppers. Maybe even Vana and Morning Ponya as well. I actually do make silver by selling the copper equipment and Earth Tower cosmetic. I probably make around 5 million up to 10 million silver per equipment. It is also depending on the demands for the consumer as well as to be honest, but personally I think it is a decent silver making method for some pocket chain. The next method will involve RNG and that is the Goddess Grace and the Fermidian Public House Ballot. Yes, I know that many players are quite frustrated with the RNG system and I totally understand their feeling because like myself as the players, I also spend quite a lot of silver and powder in this RNG content. However, it doesn't mean that you are going to be stuck at the bottom forever with the RNG, but instead, there are a few ways to take advantage of the Goddess Grace and the Femidian Public House Ballot. Starting off with the Goddess Grace, this system usually spawns right after Scare Clips or Morning Pony Fuel Boss has been defeated for the fuel. The system will automatically send out a message to the work chat and letting players know that the Goddess Grace will spawn after 180 seconds. After that, the Goddess Grace will be available for 10 minutes and players can invest as much silver as they want to obtain the item for the prize pool. 
Also, each goddess spin costs 100,000 silvers, and some of the prize pool includes Art Stone, Sandra Magic Fire, Music's Tum, Enchantment Coupon, Blessed Sword, and etc. Now, what I'd recommend is spending at least 500,000 silver up to 1 million silver per goddess run. The reason why you should be doing this is because you're looking for the best possible payout instead of blowing up all the silver at once for the end game items like Art Stone. The fastest way of being rich is not about how many rare items that you get from the game, but how you carefully invest the silver for future growth. Players can convert the hero support box into the goddess grade version by purchasing the recipe from the shop NPC in town. This recipe costs roughly 900 up to 1000 silver depending on the TTW taxes. What I can tell you about this potion is that the potions are very useful for legendary content like Vana, Morimponia, and White Witch Forest. That 100% damage boost from the goddess version is technically is like having a max attribute death sentence from Oracle. For the enchantment coupon, you can save this coupon and use it to upgrade future equipment for your characters, like this side Savinios or Legend Glacia equipment. Assuming if you're aiming for plus 16 or plus 21, then this enchantment coupon will come in pretty handy when you're upgrading your equipment. Flash shards are probably the best or valuable item right now because you need this shard to upgrade arts, crap equipment, and upgrading or unlocking your character or skills. So it's not that bad if you're getting a flash shard for the goddess grade as well. As for the central magic fire, you can sell it for 1 million silver or more for the blue one and around 300,000 up to 500,000 silver for the detail version, which is the white one. You can either use it for yourself or craft specific endgame inker or sell it on the market for extra silver. Now if you manage to land a blue one within 1 million silver investment, you're pretty much just gain all the silver back that you invested, basically double your own investment. As for the art fragment and the art stone, these items are pretty much the best payout for the goddess grace because the fragment can go up as high as 50 up to 60 mil silver per piece and 600 up to 700 mil for fully crafted art stone. So if you manage to land one, congratulations, you just make yourself rich. Now if I did mention any other item for the goddess grey, it doesn't mean that these items are bad, it just means that these items are not in demand at the moment. The ballet is a little bit different compared to the goddess grace because it will always be available in the Fermidian public house. It costs roughly 500 Sierra powders and 200 nuclear powder per spin. The price pool include limited edition cards, birds of steel fragments, skill gym box, single selected assistant album, and enchantment coupon. Now investing into the ballot is entirely depending on whether you want to sell the powder on the market for guaranteed silver or playing it with the RNG to get 10 birds of steel fragments to fully craft the seal. The only time I would recommend trying out the ballot is whenever the powder price is dropped between 150 up to 300 silver per powders. Here is the reason why. The ballot will always or pretty much give you the enchantment coupon, so if the powder price is between 150 or 300, that means you're spending 30k up to 60k per spin with the nuclear powders. Now, Sierra powder is completely worthless, and not many players are buying on the market because they are so easy to obtain from the channel mode. By the way, the enchantment coupon is worth 100,000 silver. You cannot sell this coupon, but you can use this coupon to upgrade your equipment. And lastly, we have episode 12 challenge mode. Clean CM stage 7 will provide your character at least 1.2 million silver, over 1,000 of nuclear and Sierra powder, and possibly Vibor equipment on the way. Now, if you're looking for a budget support build to get into episode 12 CM parties, I recommend picking up either Lazing Healing Builds or Koshia Flag Build to support the party. I also include the link to this build in the video description below, so feel free to check it out. Now, if your character is not strong enough to run episode 12 maps, you can always try out a District 15 and Marvin 32 Water. These two areas are quite popular, and you will always find someone to pop in the channel mode portals. Well, that is pretty much for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Oh, before we go, I actually made a poll several days ago about which form of communication would you all prefer whenever you get any help or ask questions related to the game. It seems that a lot of players are leaning forward with the Discord one, so I decided to create my own Discord that will heavily focus on the YouTube channels. The Discord link will be available in the video description below, so feel free to join the Discord if you guys want to hang out or drop by for check and chills. I'm also available on 3 of Savior subreddit Discord as well. With that being said, this is Sadochi once again, and I will see you all next time. Later!